This question has to do with taxes, insurance, and licensing. And the question is, well, basically the question is that an individual asked this business owner and this person owns a small business if he had the correct licensing and paid taxes on his gross receipts. And this individual says, I never thought I had to pay tax for this work. So I'm going to explain several things about this. And he goes on to say, if he pays tax, that will really damage his business. So he, he also is asking about if he has to have licensing and insurance. So I'm going to try to answer this question with some details. So let's start with the tax side. So this should be true for the U.S., Canada, U.K., New Zealand, Australia, all over. You have to pay tax, period. And so the way to think about tax, and it doesn't matter even if you're small, small business, you still have to pay tax. So let's start with the what I would call income tax. So there's sales tax, there's income tax, there's self-employment tax. So let's start with the, the first side of this. And this is the taxes that you pay based on your profits. So gross profit, gross receipts, that is the total amount of money you made for the year. Take out all your expenses, your, the money left over is your profit. And on that profit, and I'm keeping this intentionally simple, you're going to have to pay self-employment tax. Self-employment tax is roughly 15.3%. That's not the exact number, but that is the equivalent of social security tax. Because you're self-employed, the business owner, you pay the entire tax bill. Whereas when you hire employees, let's say you hire an employee, you pay half of their tax, so half of that 15 to 16% in tax, let's just call it somewhere between seven and eight percent. You pay half of you pay seven to eight percent tax, called payroll tax. It's the equivalent of social security tax, and then they pay the other half. So if you pay a hundred dollars a year, they'd pay seven to eight dollars a year in payroll taxes, and you'd pay seven to eight dollars of their payroll tax each year. Whereas when you're self-employed and you're paying yourself, you have to pay both sides which is that 15.3 tax. And again, 15.3 is not the exact number. So you are first and foremost liable for that, and you pretty much can't get out of that tax. You're going to pay that on the money left over after your expenses, period. Then after that, you're going to pay federal income tax. And that's going to be some percentage, and that percentage is of your profits, and that percentage is determined based on how much money you make. You fall into different tax brackets. If you make under 50000 it's a certain percent. If you make 50 to, let's just say 80, and that's not accurate, you pay a percentage. If you pay 80 to 100 and something, you pay a percentage. And that percentage is goes up as you make more money. And if you're make, not making very much money, then there's a high probability that you will either not pay any federal tax or the federal tax you paid in, you'll get it back at the end of the year. So even if you have a small company, you may pay no federal tax, but you will pay that self-employment tax. When you're pricing your work, you do not take into account federal income tax or social security tax. Now, by the nature of paying employees, you do take into account your social security tax that you're paying for them, the payroll tax. It's called labor burden. It's part of what goes into labor burden, and you can Google that. But you do technically take into account that, let's just call it 7 to 8%, that you're paying because that's the cost of having them as an employee. But you don't take into account at the end of the year when you're getting your profits out of the business, you don't take into account in advance your federal tax and your social security tax. You only take that into account on the payroll that you're paying within your company to service your clients, to provide that, uh, basically to service the clients, to take care of the work. So that's not a consideration. Now we move into sales tax. Sales tax is not a consideration when you're pricing the work either. So if you price the work and the job is $1,000 a month, then you add to the $1,000 a month sales tax. It's a line item on the invoice. So if I were quoting a price to the client, I would tell them it's $1,000 a month. And then I'm going to invoice them for 1000 plus the sales tax. So if the sales tax is 8%, then their bill will be $1,080. And when I get paid, I set the $80 aside and I accumulate it and eventually pay the sales tax office. So 
there is no penalty here on sales tax to you. You're not taking the sales tax out of the money you're billing them. You're adding the sales tax to the money you're billing them. They pay the sales tax, not you. They pay you, you hold it, you pay the government. The sales tax office will go after you in a major way if you do not pay your sales tax. And just because you don't know that you're supposed to pay sales tax does not give you an out. You will still owe the sales tax and you will owe the penalties. And if you close down your business, they will still get you. You don't get out of it. So when it comes to federal tax, social security, sales tax, you want your ducks in a row. These are business ending mistakes. And they're definitely mistakes that will give you a lot of stress and keep you up at night. So there's no reason not to do it right. There's no, you can't get out of it. And you, you charge the sales tax back to the client. When you're pricing your work and you're hiring employees and you're paying their payroll taxes and paying them each month, those expenses are built into your pricing. You've got to think about these things. And so also when you're pricing your work, if you're a small company, and let's say that your competitors could sell work at $100. And you think, you know what, I can do this, it's just me, I could do it for 80. The flaw in that thinking is that eventually you'll have employees and you'll have trucks and you'll have expenses. So you should go ahead and price your work correctly now so that as you hire employees, as you do more marketing, as you have more expenses, you're already pricing the work to cover those expenses. Because what will happen is if you don't take that into account now and you sell that work, you won't be able to grow because the work you already sold doesn't have enough room left in it to cover the expenses, the cost of growth. So you want to be very careful there. It's a classic mistake of underpricing work in the early years of the business be, and you still make profit. The problem is you're not considering the future expense, expenses that come with growth. So make sure you price so that you're covering growth as you become a more mature business. And when I say mature, it's not even that big of a business. So I would then add to this licensing. I can't speak directly to licensing, but rule of thumb, it's different in every state. Rule of thumb is in most states, lawn care does not require licensing, excuse me, lawn mowing. Lawn care such as fertilization weed control does. Pest control, absolutely. In some cases, tree care does. So depending on what you're doing, in, in the state you're in, you will have different licensing requirements and it is different state by state, service by service. You can Google it and, and you, can, you can Google your state and your service and the word license, you can figure this stuff out. And so I'd recommend doing that. And if you, again, you can get in quite a bit of trouble putting down chemicals and not having a license. So the other way to figure some of this out is go to companies like, if you're doing fertilization weed control, go to Lesco, go to some of these other companies that sell chemicals and just ask them, what do I need to do to get licensed? Where do I do it? They'll tell you, they know. And then when it comes to insurance, in most states, workers' compensation is required. It's not required in every state, but it's required in the majority of states. Even if it's not required in your state, most commercial contracts cannot be won without proof of workers' comp. So workers' comp is an expense. It goes into what's called labor burden. It's an expense. Um, for every employee you hire, workers' comp goes up. And so it's an expense just like payroll taxes. When you hire an employee and you have to pay their matching payroll taxes, that was that 7 to 8% I alluded to. Just the same when you hire an employee. When you hire them, a cost comes with them, and that's workers' compensation because your workers' comp goes up for every additional person you have on your team. That gets built into your expenses, which are a cost which will either will lower your profits if you don't price the worker correctly and compensate for that expense. And so expect to have a workers' comp expense. When you're just getting started and you're really small, in most states there's a number where when you do over this amount of revenue, you have to have it. Based on a couple things I in your email, or, or let me say it this way. If you're not doing a lot of revenue in this too, you can Google on the web. If you're not doing a lot of revenue, you may not have to do workers' comp yet. But you, you need to check that one out. When it comes to general liability, you typically don't have to have it by law. Again, state by state, it's different, but you generally need it to win the business of commercial properties. And so my best recommendation is to Google this stuff, to go to the vendors that sell you chemicals, ask them, go to other people in the industry, ask them just like you asked me, but by state, you're going to have to find somebody in your state that can answer that question. And even if you ask somebody and they tell you wrong, you're still liable. So for that reason, I recommend doing a little Google research yourself, maybe asking a CPA, but dig in and make sure you get the answer. But I gave you a rule of thumb 
So you know for a fact that you have to charge sales tax. And again, I didn't mention this, by the way, from state to state, if you have to charge sales tax varies. For example, in some states, you may not have to charge sales tax on services, just on product. In others, you might charge it on product, but not on services. I'm in Texas. In Texas, we have to charge sales tax on pretty much all service and all product. And so by state, that will be different. And you'll need to figure that out for your state. And so you can Google sales tax, office, and then whatever the services you provide. You can ask your CPA. But again, even if they tell you wrong, you're still liable. So double check it. Good luck.